Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast channel. My name is Mina, welcome. This is the first episode of 2020, which is crazy. Today is Thursday the 9th of January and and yeah, I'm coming to you from my home just south of London where I live with my husband, our daughter and our two cats. And, um, and yeah, it's a bit of a weird day lighting wise, so hopefully it's not too awkward. Um, it seems to be fairly bright, but the back is really dark in here. But I'm sat by the window, so there's good light. Fingers crossed it all works out, okay? So in today's episode, we're going to be starting with talking a bit of some, talking a bit about some news and things that are coming up, events that I'm going to be at and stuff like that. Then um, we're going to be talking about some finished objects, works in progress, um, some spinning stuff. I'm going to include the spinning in this podcast just because I don't have a lot of time to record today and then um acquisitions and other bits and bobs and stuff to round out the podcast so <laughs> in terms of news and things that are going on the biggest thing is next week i'm going to be going to new york for vogue knitting live which i'm so excited about i leave on the, on tuesday morning so tuesday the what does that make it the 13th I think so yeah Tuesday the 13th I leave for New York I'm going to be um teaching at Vogue Knitting Live like I said on the Friday Saturday and Sunday and I'm so excited about it I'm also a bit nervous but um not as nervous or as anxious as I was last year I think I was a complete wreck last year just before I left but this year thankfully it's okay um <laughs> it's quite funny because last year Perry also has a trip to New York in January and last year our trips coincided to be like on the exact same weekend like the, his my VKL and his work event were on the exact same weekend so I think that's why it was extra stressful because we were leaving Layla behind and my mum was coming to, my mum came and stayed and looked after her while we were both away which was fine in hindsight like and I knew at the time it would be fine but it was just incredibly stressful for me at the time because Perry had already gone and I was going after him so I had to get everything ready and make sure she was fine and it was just all a bit stressful <laughs> but it was okay um this year we're kind of our events are back to back so his is the weekend after VKL so I'm going first and then I get back on the Monday and then he leaves on Tuesday the following day for his thing for the rest of that week so it's just going to be kind of like passing by each other really quickly <laughs> um and so yeah it's gonna be busy and then what else is coming up oh i'm gonna be teaching at vogue knitting live in seattle in march which is also really exciting i haven't been back to seattle for oh 17 years which is crazy i went to seattle when i was 16 so i'm 33 now so you do the maths i think that's right um so it's been a long time i'm so excited to go back to seattle in March for Vogue Knitting Live there and I'm teaching the same six classes that I taught that I'm going to be teaching in New York in Seattle those tickets are now um, available as well so I will post a link to um, to that if anyone's going to Vogue Knitting Live in Seattle and would like to take a class with me I'll post a link to where you can purchase tickets below this video um, so I'm really excited about that I'm also going to be teaching at the Babbles um, retreat this summer for the life of me, I can't remember if it's June or July. <laughs> I think it's July. I don't know why. I, I'm i so bad at remembering which dates that was. But I'm, I have a feeling it's in July. I will post the dates below. But I think that's already sold out. So I'm not sure that's going to be useful to anybody. Um, but if it's not sold out, I will post the link. And then I'm also going to be teaching in Cardiff in October at the um, Knit Tea Retreat. And again, if tickets are, I don't, I'm not sure if tickets are available for that yet or not. I will have to double check. And if they are, I will post a link to that as well. So those are the events I can currently tell you about. I am teaching at at least one other event, but I'm not allowed to talk about it yet. So we'll have to wait for that one. Um, and I know I'm definitely teaching at it because I signed the contract this morning. So that's really exciting. Um, and then what else is going on? um other news i'm trying to think it's just been so much going on to be honest i did do vlogmas this last this last this past christmas that's just gone so i vlogged every day in the month of december i tend to do vlogmas up to new year's just because i think there's a lot of fun things that go on between christmas and new year's as well um so you can find that all on the channel there's a playlist as well for vlogmas so you can just watch it all if you want um and then 
and then yeah it's just been it's just been a busy busy few weeks it just doesn't seem to be slowing down for this year either i have so many plans and things that i want to do this year but i just don't know if i'm going to have time to do half of what i want to do which is crazy um one big thing i do have planned once i get back from new york actually two things i have planned for when i get back from new york one is i've want to reorganize my stash it's fairly organized actually i just want to pull everything out and do a proper inventory and cross check it against my spreadsheet inventory that i have because the number two thing i want to do is a big d stash i've really gone through my stash essentially and i've pulled out a giant bag let me pull this bag up and show you giant bag full of yarn um oh my god it's so heavy like this is all full of yarn that I'm going to be de-stashing so <laughs> power rangers um so I'm going to be doing mostly as like mystery grab bags I will be giving some information about the weight of yarn fiber content and stuff like that but colors and stuff will mostly be a mystery um there'll be ranging from two skeins to four skeins in the in the bags um just because they're going to be priced to sell they're going to be mysteries they're fun colors and it's not because i don't like the yarn i do i love the yarn but there are a few reasons why i'm de-stashing them one it's because it's a little bit overwhelming for me to have that much yarn two a lot of the stuff i knit is um design work so a lot of the design work that i do is with the yarn that's given to me as yarn support so i don't use a lot of my personal stash throughout the year three i'm not knitting as many socks as i used to because there's only so many socks someone needs so like I've gotten to the point now where most of the people I knit for have plenty of socks and I have plenty of socks so I'm kind of slowing down my sock knitting just because I don't need to knit 100 pairs of socks every year it's a bit superfluous and let's be honest a lot of my personal stash I don't need to hold on to because I don't have um, immediate plans to use it even though I love the yarn I mean there are some yarns that I've had in that I have in my stash that I'm going to be selling that I'll from three four years ago that i absolutely love and i always intended on getting around to knitting but just didn't have time so that's that um right should we move on to finished objects i think that's most of the news and i don't i, don't, I think i have one very casual knit along that i'm running at the moment which i'll share more about later but um otherwise let's just dive right in so my first I guess like this is technically a partially finished object because it's not really finished but each one of these things is kind of a finished object so those of you who've been following for a while know that i've been working on a pinwheel scrap blanket for my daughter layla and i'm doing the pinwheel scrap blanket is one of my designs that you can find on ravelry um you can find me on ravelry as knitting expat designs or mina philip knitting expat designs is my design shop name um and you can find me on Instagram as Knitting Expat. So um, the pattern is written for fingering weight, but I've modified it slightly to use it for like a DK worsted weight. So, or fingering weight held double. So that's what I'm doing for her blanket. And I knit a ton of squares last year. So my aim was to do one square a month. That was my aim for last year. And for the most part, I did it up until October, um, sorry up until August so I'd had eight squares by the end of August and then I kind of slacked a bit towards the latter part of the year and I thought you know what I'll just do the last four squares that I need to do in December I was doing a mini skein swap with a friend so for an like, advent swap so I knew I was going to get 24 minis there and I thought well that's three squares sorted because each square takes eight minis and I was like well I have enough minis I can put together another squares worth of minis and just do the last four in December well, before the first weekend of December was over, I'd done those extra four squares. And and yeah, so some of these are not from December. This is just all the ones I have done. And then over the course of December, I knit another eight. <laughs> so by the end of the year, I had 20 squares done. And, um, and yeah, so this is about half of what I want for the blanket, I think. I think in total, I'm going to have 40 squares. Um, we'll see how that looks when I get the 40 squares done and then I'll lay it out seam it up and if I feel like it needs to be a bit bigger I will do some more squares um, but yeah like I said I've modified the pattern slightly it is written for fingering weight so I doubled it um, so I'm doing it for like I said DK worsted 
So I cast on 20 stitches and I'm using four millimeter needles. So slightly fewer stitches than the pattern calls for and slightly larger needles. Um, and I'm getting a pretty decent sized square. So I'm really happy with how these are looking. And yeah, really chuffed with the fact that I've managed to get 20 done. I haven't blocked any of these yet. Um, what I'm thinking I might do is I might block them all before I start seaming them together just because it's going to be easier to do that than to block the blanket once it's finished because it's going to be so huge. It's not going to be hugely massive but it's going to be huge to deal with blocking it all at once. And then this is the last square I wanted to show you because this was all out of hand spun that I spun the singles on my Turkish drop spindle and then plied them on my wheel. And if you can't tell this one is a slightly weird wibbly wobbly block compared to some of these other ones which even though they haven't been blocked are still fairly smooth and flat that's because i realized after when i was starting to um, knit this block that i hadn't actually set the hand spun before i knit with it um i'd forgotten to wash it so it's still like very energized um it's fine for something like this it's not a problem but if it was for an actual garment or something else i probably would have um, ripped it out, rescanned it and washed it first but for like for this it's fine but I'm really happy with this block it's a very sort of special block to me for that reason all right that's those 20 blocks talked about and out of the way um, then I have a couple of other finished objects I have a couple of pairs of socks so we will go over those first up are these is this pair so this is out of some West Yorkshire spinners in I can't remember the colorway now I thought it was owl but it's not owl it's something else and i can't remember what it's called but there we go and these are i, I used a pants croy sock yarn for the cuffs and heels and i think these are going to be for my dad eventually um i knit them for his size feet and the very last pair of socks that i knit in 2019 which in the year total i knit 22 pairs of adult socks which is probably the least number of socks I've knit in a year since I started knitting socks <laughs> so um gives you an idea I think on average um I had a couple of years where I knit somewhere between 40 and 50 pairs and then one year which I where I knit like 90 pairs of socks which was just bonkers um <laughs> hence why I don't need to knit that many pairs of socks like people if in case you're wondering why because I've knit probably upwards of 200 pairs of socks by now um and so this is the last pair of socks I knit in 2019. This is my Christmas Eve cast on. Um, the yarn is by Mustache Yarns in her like perfectly matched skeins. So it's like two um, skeins dyed together so you get perfectly matching stripes. However, I, I like to do this with my self-striping yarns where it's like sort of a color progression and not like this. Um, I'd like to knit them up in opposite directions that way especially if you're wearing them in shoes and you only see maybe the top part of the sock um you kind of see all the colors in this top section from both socks compared to only seeing two tops that look like one half of the color gradient color progression i hope that made sense um but yeah so essentially that's what i did i knit them two at a time um i knit my socks two at a time cuff down and if they're not two at a time they're two at a time concurrently on separate needles so that's those are my preferred ways of knitting um, socks and I did these with contrasting cuffs heels and toes and so I just alternated the cuff uh, the heel and cuff colors and I did the same color for the toes these are all just minis from my stash that I had the only one I know is the yellow which is yellow brick road from Labby anime I had a little mini of that so I, that's the only one I know what it is the others were just randoms in my stash of minis and I knit all of my socks on 2.25 millimeter needles. Um, typically, I, I'll use um, Chagu needles or high high sharps. More often than not, these days I prefer Chagus just because the cord is nicer. Um, and yeah, that's what I've done for that. Um, I did actually knit a stripy mix and match sweater for a two-year-old um, over Christmas as well, but I mailed that off to her for um for christmas so and she got it in time for christmas so that was great and then i also worked on this sweater over christmas and i finished it in the early new year so this is the little forager and you may recognize it as being a mini version of my forage sweater that i 
designed last year and published in when did i publish it i think it was like september or october last year so that's this one and this is what, so this i've done for my daughter and i knit this one in the four to six year size so it's quite significantly larger than she is <laughs> right now she's almost three but she's a large she's a larger than average uh, for her age she is larger than average for her age she's quite tall so um this will fit her quite nicely probably next winter and she's got a lot of sweaters that i've knit her in the two to four year sort of size range so anything i knit for her now i'm knitting in the next size range up of like four to six so because she's got plenty in her wardrobe right now that she still can fit into so i'm sort of like stocking her wardrobe for the next size up um and this is going to be a design that's going to come out soon i've had the final tech edited version back from my tech editor so i'll be issuing a call for test knitters probably after i get back from new york at this rate i don't think i have time to organize the test knit before i go away but this was knit out of duck duck wool yarn and if i remember the colorway names this one was called spellbreaker this sort of natural one i think it was called down feather and one of these two was called family table and i can't remember the other one now something about merry soul merry of soul i can't remember the colorway name um unfortunately I'm, sorry, I'm really sorry but if you're really curious just let me know and i can find out i can check the tags i still have those and yeah i'm really excited about this one i decided not to do a crop length and do a more like normal length and without the high low hem although the high low hem will be an option in the pattern if you want i just was running out of red yarn and i yeah that was it i didn't want to have to i only got two skeins of the red and i didn't want to ask the dyer to have to send me another skein of the red just because i wanted to do a high low hem i don't really think layla would care that much but yeah she seems quite happy with it she hasn't tried it on yet but um i'm planning on taking photos of her wearing this probably around her third birthday um I'm trying to make it a bit of a tradition where every year on her birthday or around her birthday I take her out to take some portraits of her um, each year. I still need to trim all the ends. They're all woven in, I just haven't trimmed them. Um, so I think that's going to be her sweater that she wears this year for her birthday portraits. So that's it for finished objects that I have to show you. I have finished a few other things over the last month, I just don't have them on hand to show you. Um, but yeah i didn't want to sit here and go over like a bajillion things so moving on to works in progress i have three thi oh four things actually let me go grab the other thing so like i said i have four works in progress i think the oldest one i still have on the needles is this blanket so this was from we are knitters and this was a kit that they sent me last month in december to knit up and so I chose this kit, which was the Medea blanket, and it's knit out of there the wool, which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. It's fairly soft. You get um, where's the yardage information? Can't remember. Was it 80 meters? That was at 80 meters in 200 grams. So it's a very chunky, chunky, chunky wool. Uh, they sent me. I had nine skeins to knit this blanket, and I'm into skein number six yeah skein number six now so i'm over halfway well over halfway but i was starting to get some wrist pain last month and so i put this blanket down because one it's quite heavy now it's so big and also it's so chunky um so i did put the blanket down for a while and i haven't picked it up since um i was getting some elbow pain but this is where i'm at right now you <laughs> can't even see me it's just a big screen of yellow and yeah it's really soft and comfy and it's at that size now where it keeps my lap warm while i'm knitting on it which is quite nice but i need to get back to that and get it finished and yeah i picked this i was originally going to do a red and do a blanket for layla but i but pretty much every blanket i knit now is for layla anyway so i thought i'd go with yellow this all like ochre color uh mustardy yellow because that kind of keeps in with our color scheme ish we don't really have a strict color scheme in our house but we have orange orange we have yellow and blue pillows i have my yellow sort of wing back armchair and we have the yellow um like cube ikea cabinet for layla's toys in the living room so it kind of keeps in with the rest of the colors in this place 
and Layla still likes it. She still says it's her blanket, so I'm sure she's going to use it a ton, as are the rest of us. Um, so that's my first work in progress, and that's on size. What size needles are these? Like ridiculously chunky needles. Um, oh, okay, it's all rubbed off on the thing, but I think they were like 15 millimeter needles or whatever that is in US sizing. Um, then this is my next oldest whip, which is out of my handspun. And this is the Elysian shawl, which is one of my designs that I published over the Christmas period. And so I've got a picture of it. Nope, I didn't print the pattern page, which is fine. But actually, this is a design that I came up with for the two color fisherman rib class that I'm teaching in New York. Um, and and yeah, I got lots of positive feedback about it, so I released it as a standalone pattern as well, which I probably was going to do eventually, but maybe not as soon as I did. But um, but yeah, this is obviously it's upside down. But so it starts at the top with like a garter triangle, then you go into this two color fisherman rib section, and you change colors part way through, and then you'll it'll end with like a solid garter border in the third color, and then I in my original sample and in this one what I'll do is I'll do an eye cord bind off in the first colour as like a contrast pop at the bottom. Um, so this is how far I'm at with it. So it's written and designed for a DK weight yarn and that was what the original sample was knit out of but it's written as a recipe so you can really use any weight of yarn. So I'm using these three skeins of handspun. The two coloured skeins are Rambouillet and then natural white is a Polworth. So they're all really soft, bouncy yarns. They're all fairly early hand spun for me. Um, I'm just trying to think when I spun these, but yeah, fairly early hand spun, like early last year. So about a year ago, uh, fairly early days for me. And they've all come out around a sportish weight in terms of yardage. They have similar yardages as well. So that's really good. And that's what I've been working on. And as you can see, I've got a fair amount of the green left. I didn't go to the full percentage amount in the pattern for knitting it just because it was it was starting to get really quite big and it's already really this section the brioche uh, brioche the fishman rib section is already a lot more than i had done in my original sample i'm going to keep going for a little bit longer you can see it on the back you can see how the color changes more clearly you can see it on the front when you pull the stitches apart you can see that color change a bit more um so yeah i think i've got maybe another Mm, three four repeats before I switch to doing just the purple on the edge as it is I think I want to go for another 15 grams of the purple being used up before I switch to just doing a solid border and at the moment this is on 3.5 millimeter us fours I think yeah 3.5 millimeter millimeter us four so I used a four millimeter for the garter sections so us six and then 3.5 or us four for the two color fisherman rib section because the gauge in this section is a lot looser just because of the stitch pattern it's naturally used looser and the project bag that i'm using was made by a friend brendy who came to the lay family yarn retreat which i went to in november last year it says knitting is my happy place and this was um a prize i won in the raffle at the end of the retreat which was really really awesome and a really nice surprise it's a really cute little project bag as well I'm just going to shove that all back in there. It's getting a little bit small for this project, but it'll do. It'll be fine. There we go. Make it work. Um, my next work in progress is one that I started on New Year's Eve. And it's in my lovely red Hide and Hammer project bag. So this is one of her waxed canvas project bags in red with the black leather handles and the gold trim on the hardware and it's got the stud closure as well so the way these work is it's kind of like a large open like a it's almost like a paper bag style and then you kind of roll down the top you swing this bit round and then it's got the closure bit on the back and then you sort of like push the stud closure through one of the holes and you're you're done i'm not going to do it right now because i need to open it up again and the leather's still a bit tight from being so new and uh and yeah so it's adjustable that you can have it close higher up if your bag's more full etc or lower down if it's less full so it's very adaptable in that way and it's great 
And what I like to do is when I'm working from it is I roll the top down. And then it sits open nicely as like a knitting bucket as well. And uh, so this was actually, I the sweater that I knit for a friend's daughter, which I mentioned earlier, was actually for New, who is the maker and owner behind Hide and, Hi Hide and Hammer. And we did a trade. So I did the sweater for her daughter and she sent me this lovely project bag in exchange. So this is the cowl that's in that bag and it's really, really fun. Um, it's a really fun color work pattern it's very simple it's fairly simple but very effective with these colors and I have an idea for a design for this um, it's kind of more than just this but um, kind of like a collection slash an all-in-one pattern slash an any gauge pattern slash all sorts of things in one <laughs> and so I need to s sort of think about it a little bit more plan it out um, and and yeah see if I can make that happen by the end of this year that'd be that'd be great if I can make it happen by the end of the year but the yarn that I'm using because I'm sure that's what you guys are interested in hearing about is uh, I didn't want to give too much away because one I don't want someone else stealing my ideas and two um, just because it's not a fully formed idea yet so I don't want to say something and then have to backtrack later so these are the yarns that I'm using so this lovely rainbow skein is um, my hand spun. Not super early hand spun actually, but sort of like middle of the year hand spun from last year. And so this is some Corridor, um fiber that I blended into rainbow Rolex with some silk noil, which is all the white bits in it. And I spun this mainly long draw actually, and then did it as a two ply. And and yeah, and because it was Rolags and they were rainbow, it's come up as like a self-striping. And I actually, I think I have five repeats total in this set because I had 10 Rolags and so I did it as a two ply. So there's five repeats of the rainbow in total. And I think this will be a pretty good sort of sized singular loop cowl at the end of it. And the gray that I'm using is a Cormo uh, farm yarn by, uh, where is it? Will You Farm and U is E-W-E. Will You Farm um, from Vermont. It's 90% Cormo, 10% black fine wool, 240 yards in four ounces. It's roughly a DK weight. It's written here as being a two ply light worsted slash DK. I have several skeins of this. I did buy, I think I bought six skeins of this with the idea of knitting a sweater out of it, but I never did. But it's really lovely and I'm not de-stashing this because it is such special yarn that I don't think I'm going to be, be able to get hold of again. They weren't at Rhinebeck this last year, so um, really special. So I have more of this grey because I'm probably going to run out of the grey before I run out of the hand spun. And the hand spun is actually more of a worsted Aran weight anyway. So mixing, mixing gauges, mixing fibres weights in this project. But I'm so happy with how this is working out. I wanted a really simple sort of graphic design that would really show off the colours but also really show off, still have a really nice design to it. I didn't want it to be something super intricate because I thought with all the different colours and the silk noils, any sort of like super intricate pattern might get really lost with all the busyness. But I really like this large sort of graphic effect. And yeah, really excited about that one. And so that's coming along nicely. I think this might actually be one of my travel projects for New York next week. And my other potential travel project, actually to be honest, all three of my main whips are pretty good travel projects right now. I think even the shawl might come with me as well if I haven't finished it by next week. Um, my last work in progress, which is another potential travel project for me, is a new design, a new sweater design. I have so many sweater designs for this year, it's actually somewhat mental. Um, I think I have two right now, I've got the Little Forager and I have that Hug Shrug that I still need to get test knit. I think it's been, it's, I need to double check, but I think I've got the final tech edit sorted now. Um, so I need to do the test knits call out for that one as well. So that's two. Then I have this one on the needles. I have another one that I've drafted. And then I have another one that I need to type up. So there's at least five right there. And we're not even halfway through January, January yet, which is nuts. Um, so this is another sweater design, which you can't really tell from far away, but from up close you can sort of see, you can see the stitch pattern. 
So the yarn I'm using for this is Barnyard Knits in the granite colorway on their sock weight yarn. So I've got a full skein here to show you. I need to wind up the rest of this yarn. Um, there we go, Barnyard Knits. And it's the granite. 75% super merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards in 800 grams. And I believe they're going to be at BKL this year. So if you're going, definitely check out their booth. They have some lovely, lovely, lovely yarns. And so this is a bottom-up sweater, if you haven't been able to tell. It's going to be a drop shoulder, sort of a similar shape to my Parisian Dreams sweater. Um, but this one has some really unique characteristics shall we say so this stitch pattern is pretty dense at the bottom and then as you get up higher up you can't really tell because i've only just started doing it it becomes less dense so you don't do the cable crosses as frequently and then once you get to the top where you split for the front and back it just goes all into stockinette so the top section and the sleeves are all in stockinette and the patterning is all just on the lower part of the body but it sort of like gradually fades out. You know what, let me show you this watch because that kind of explains it a lot better than I am right now. There we go. So you've got the more dense patterning goes up to a slightly more spaced out patterning and into stockinette. So it's like a gradual, it's a pattern fade <laughs> rather than a color fade. So you're fading the pattern out um, into stockinette at the top. So the way I thought of it was you've got the really, um, I guess labor intensive part in terms of like the design in the simplest part of the pattern which is just the straight body section so it makes the body really interesting to knit and then the top and the sleeves are in stockinette so it's really simple to follow the instructions and really easy to knit the only tricky thing with this pattern is because of the changing stitch patterns the gauge changes so this pattern actually calls for four different needle sizes one the largest needle size for the densest pattern section, then a size smaller for the lighter pattern section, then a size smaller than that for the stockinette, and then a size smaller than the stockinette for your ribbing. So unfortunately there is that, and therefore for that reason as well, swatching for this pattern is gonna be very important if um, you want to make sure you get a good fit. Having said that though, this pattern is fairly forgiving in the sense that it is a drop shoulder shaped construction um so it is intended to have a slightly looser fit um i've said up to four inches in the design but it can be more or less it really just depends on your personal preference um and and yeah but you will need to be changing your needle sizes throughout starting with the largest at the bottom working your way up to the smallest one just to account for the change in gauge with the stitch patterns throughout the design and this project bag is by Nerdbud Makery, and I picked this one up at India Untangled this year as a special little birthday treat for myself. And yeah, so that's where, where we are with that one. I'm really excited. I'm hoping to get that finished by the end of the month or early February so I can get that out to test knitters soon. It's actually already with my tech editor. I've typed it up. So she's going to be tech editing that. And um, once I get it finished, I can sort out yardages and schematics and all that sort of stuff all that fun stuff. <laughs> I'm going to have to have a big photo session for all these upcoming designs once I'm back from New York. Oh geez. Whew. That's quite daunting in and of itself. <laughs> so let's talk about some spinning. I have some fibre or yarn rather here to talk to you guys about. So I'm not really sure what order all of this is in. I think I'm not even sure if I might, I might have already shown this to you guys in the last podcast but I'm not entirely sure but this was a skein that I spun from uh, fiber optic yarns it is a 50 50 merino tensile blend I don't have any of the final measurements and stuff with me for any of these things um, but I spun this and then chain plied it to maintain the gradient and it goes from like this green to a lovely sort of like purpley blue um, so it's just a really fun gradient and it's actually very drapey so it'd be really nice in like a shawl or a cowl or like a cowlette, shawlette type thing. Um, or even as like mittens maybe, or a hat, a nice like floppy hat. Um, but yeah, so this is probably gonna go up in the Etsy shop at some point. So if you're interested, keep an eye out for that or just let me know. Um, it's roughly a sort of like sport to DK weight, I would say. And has similar yardage, I think. I can't remember exactly, but if you are interested in that, just let me know. Um, and then there were these two 
skeins that I spun. Um, I spun all the singles for these on my Turkish spindle as well. This one is a little bit more green than it's showing up on camera. There we go. Um, and these were from Ca uh, Cat and Sparrow UK. And I spun the singles for this on my Turkish spindle and then I applied them on my wheel. Um, they came together. I can't remember the fibre contents exactly, but the idea was that you spin a single of one, a single of the other, and then you ply them together, which obviously isn't what I did. I decided to keep them separate, but I might use them for socks, even though they are a two ply. Um, I think it might still work out quite nicely. I'll try and twist that together. And then what I might do is like opposing cuffs, heels and toes in the other color on each sock. So they still kind of go, but we'll see what I end up doing. Layla claims the like the orangey red one is is hers, of course. Um, if you aren't aware and if you're new, my daughter's favourite colour is red, so anything red is is Layla's. Um, that's how it looks, sort of skiing together and get the idea. Um, but yeah, so I'm not entirely sure what that's going to be yet. I'm thinking socks, but it might be something else. Um, I just spun up a little row lag sample just for practice. Um, I was practicing long draw with this one. It's been a while since I've done that, so I wanted to practice a bit. Um, as part of one of my advent calendars that I did with my friend Sam, she sent me some row lags and I spun those up. And I got a Andy and Plying tool from Perry for Christmas as part of my Christmas present, and I wanted to try that out. So that's what this is two ply using the Andy and Plying tool. Um, and then I also spun this over Christmas. So this is a skein of Polworth that my mum and Layla dyed together using some food colouring. And it's come out like this. It's very sort of like muted, almost like dried flowers kind of effect. It reminds me of like potpourri, those sorts of colours. And this has come out as a really solid fingering weight. I haven't measured it since I washed it, but it was definitely around the 400 and... 60 400 and something yards before washing so we'll see how much it's shrunk since because polworthers had have a tendency to poof up quite a bit but it's it's so lovely and it's actually one of my most consistent spins so far i mean look at that i am so proud of this one in terms of how cons consistent the spin has turned out on this i mean it's not perfect but it's pretty darn good compared to what i'm used to um and then this is a spin that i'm kind of halfway through so this was some fibre that I got from John Arban Textiles and I think I picked this up at Fibre East last year and it's their Harvest Hues range in the russet colourway and their Harvest Hues, Hues range is a really lovely, really sort of like dynamic range of fibres and yarns as well um, but the, the russet one has the most in terms of different colours in it so I was really interested to see how this spins up and I've seen the finished yarn of it and it's really beautiful and really dimensional so um, I was really happy with how it turned out. And I was aiming for a uh, really thin single to make a chain ply sort of sock yarn. I've achieved this once before, and this isn't completely perfect, but it's definitely close to what I was looking for. Um, I'm noticing it's really taking a lot of concentration on my part to be able to spin that thin. And every time I lose focus a little bit, it, my single ends up being a bit thicker than I need it to be. So um, this is half of the fibre, obviously. And I think I ended up getting about 150-ish yards. So with a bit of shrinkage, it's going to be a little bit less than that. But that should still be enough for me to get a, a sock out of one. Um, and if I do contrasting cuffs, heels and toes, then I'll definitely have enough, which is probably what I'll end up doing just to be safe. Um, and so I still need to spin the other half, but I kind of wanted to show the contrast between the two versions before I spun up the other half of it as well. So that's that's that one um my default spin is kind of like a my default not thinking about it kind of spin is a dk to worsted two ply my thinking about it a little bit trying to spin my trying to spin default is kind of like a sport to heavy fingering weight so i really have and that's like a or a two ply fingering weight which is what this is this was a not heavily concentrating sort of spin. It also depends on the fibre and the prep and how nicely that spins as well. But 
to spin for a three ply sock yarn <laughs> takes real concentration on my part um like i really have to think about it i have to make sure i cross lace my bobbins i have to make sure that i'm really focusing and paying attention to my drafting um i don't necessarily have to like focus too much i don't have to watch what i'm doing but i have to be thinking about it and i have to be like cautious <coughs> i have to be cautious and conscious of how i'm drafting while i'm drafting so in comparison for example i spun this yesterday yeah, I spun this yesterday, all of it, at the singles, and didn't really think about it too much, didn't really um, try to spin super thin or super thick or anything. It was just kind of like letting the fibre spin how it wants to spin and trying to keep it consistent. Once I realised how thin the fibre wanted to be drafted and how, like, what its, like, default was going to be, um, I kind of just went with it. And my idea originally was for it to be a softly spun single, and then when I saw how thin it was coming out, I decided to do it as a two ply, but I still decided to do a softly spun single with a not so heavily plied two ply. So a nice sort of like soft spin, if that makes sense, not super high twist. And I'm so in love with how this turned out. I finished plying it this morning and it's just really nice. It's really bouncy. It's a 70-20 merino bamboo blend and, and yeah. The fibre was from Unique Fibres in the UK. This is part of a fibre share swap that um, I got from her fibre share package. It's kind of blowing out a little bit on camera. It's not quite so light. I mean, it is a light blue, but the bamboo is really reflecting a lot of that light, making it look a lot paler than it is. There we go. And I think I got about 200 meters or something out of this so far. So. So yeah, and once I've washed it, it's probably going to be a decent sort of like DK worsted weight. But I'm really happy with that. It's a really nice, really nice blue. Um, and yeah, that's it for spinning. In terms of acquisitions, other than my advent calendars from last year, I don't really have an, and this bag, which is lovely. I did actually get another one of these bags for Christmas. I got the dark blue, so like midnight blue colour, which is which is just the regular canvas, not the wax canvas, like this one uh, from Perry. And that was like my main Christmas present from him, which was something I wanted. And I sent him the link and I was like, hint, hint, if you want to get me something. Here's an idea <laughs> kind of thing. The only other thing that I got in December, which ironically enough, I kind of knew was coming, but didn't know when it was coming. So it was still a surprise when it showed up. Was this package from Nicole, a few loco. <coughs> of her new woolen spun, um, range of yards that are naturally dyed and I did show this off on the vlogs at the time when I got it but I kind of really wanted to show it off on the podcast as well and so this is from um it's 100% Colorado sourced and mill in Colorado Colorado is where she lives it's 80% I can't speak now 80% fine merino 10% Rommeldale and 10% blue face lesser and it's this really beautiful squishy squishy yarn and so i'm thinking this is going to become another sweater of some kind this year um once i get back from new york i need to get to swatching some ideas looking at how lovely and plump and round this yarn is i'm thinking cables will look amazing in this yarn so i want to have to do some swatches and see what we end up with and i've got a couple of skeins in the gray to use either as a contrast or for some other sort of fun features so we will see what that turns into as well and she also included a cute little pin and a lovely note in there as well so i need to organize that box at some point but that's really it to be honest that's really it in terms of stuff that's going on um for the elysian shawl i think i forgot to mention it but i'm running a really casual cow cow over on instagram it's just called the elysian shawl cow um nothing super crazy it's just running on instagram i think i'm probably going to leave it running until like mid-february so if you want to join in by all means you just need to post over on instagram and using the elysian shawl cal hashtag and i'll draw a winner and contact the winner and then i'll send them a prize so it's just like i said really casual not super um restrictive or anything like that um in terms of anything else 
there's not been a lot else going on. Like I said, I've vlogged for most of last month, so if you're really curious about what we've been up to, you can go check that out. Um, in terms of other things, uh, I will be honest, this first week of the new year has been a little bit stressful for me with everything going on in the international world in general. Um, if you don't know, if you're new and you're unaware, um, I'm Iranian by background. My parents are Iranian. I have a lot of family in Iran. I was born and raised in the UK, but like culturally and heritage wise, like that is my background. Um, I do identify as being a British Iranian. Um, and yeah, <laughs> so I will be honest, it's been a bit stressful. I've been a bit worried, especially since my parents and my brother have spent Christmas and New Year period over in Iran. Um, so an internet connection has been very sketchy so it's been a little bit hard to keep in touch with them frequently so there's been some stressful moments where I'm like I mean obviously nothing has happened in Iran itself but with all the tensions and everything going on and listening to everything on the news you just worry sometimes and um, so yeah but they're coming home today <laughs> so that's good um, I'm going to be, we're going down to see them tomorrow for the weekend, which would be really nice. I've had a few messages from people saying, oh, your parents haven't been around in vlogs last, in December and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, because they've been away, not because I'm ignoring them <laughs> or that I don't want to talk to them. They've been away. They're not been here. Um, so I can't include them if they're not here. Uh, but Layla did go spend a weekend with them in December before they went away. And we're going to go see them this weekend as well. Then, um, what else? So yeah, like I said, it's not been something I was super concerned about, but it was definitely at the back of my mind a lot over the last week where I was just like, oh dear, like I really hope nothing bad happens. Like I really hope things don't escalate it was really what was going on in my head. And I was just like, oh. I'm, I'm kind of glad things seem to be dying down and you know, people are like stepping back a little bit from where they walked up to. Um, like I said, not a political podcast I'm not really here to talk about that but um i do bring up things as and when they impact my life <laughs> impact my sanity <laughs> and yeah i do think it was something if not if even if i wasn't like completely aware of it it was definitely something that was weighing on my mind this last week so anyway moving on from that um not a whole lot else going on to be honest I can't think of anything else that I wanted to share. Layla is just in a really good place right now. Okay, I've been saying that for a while recently. It's been a great time with her right now. It's just, she's a lot of fun. She's talking more and more. She's coming out with some of like the cutest little things every now and again. Like the other day we were playing on the floor and out of nowhere she turns around to me. She says, mommy, you're my best friend. And I just about died and turned into a puddle at that moment. It was like the cutest thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how, but I managed to like not burst into tears in that moment. But <laughs> yeah, it was very cute. And um, just like little things like that. And she's so in love with her little scooter. It's a wonder we've been able to stop her from taking it to bed. And she's just, she's just so cute. It's just lovely. Um, and again, I can't believe she's gonna be three soon, which is nuts. But, um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it at that for today, to be honest. I did record a little introduction video, kind of like an introduction, get to know me, a little bit about my background and stuff like that video, which will be going up before this one. I did have a comment, I had a message from someone saying, you know, for people who are new to your channel or whatever, it might be nice to have a bit of like a get to know me kind of video. And I have done a few Q and A's, but I get their, I get their point. So I thought that'd be fun and that'll probably go up on like the landing page on my YouTube channel as well. So if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed, you'll see that video on like the, on my channel homepage, I guess. So that'll be on there. And, um, and yeah, so I'm hoping to have this video up today. Probably won't be until tonight, to be honest, because I've got to go to the dentist in a couple of hours which I am not excited about at all I completely forgot about this appointment and suddenly Perry Perry reminded me this morning and I was just like I am not mentally prepared for the dentist I hate the dentist like if there's one thing in this world that is guaranteed to make me anxious or give me anxiety is the dentist <laughs> so yes not looking forward to that but it's fine We'll get over it. I've already paid for the appointment, so I can't not go. Oh, and I will be vlogging my trip to New York for Vogue Knitting Live. So you've got that to look forward to next week. All right, I will see you guys again soon. Take care. Bye.